Welcome to Module 3 of Comprehension, Text Factors. Reading a text involves dealing with its specific characteristics and deriving information from it by using word recognition and comprehension strategies. Here is an anticipation guide to activate your prior knowledge about text structures and assist you in understanding your perceptions. Pause this mini lecture and indicate whether you agree or disagree with the statements provided. There are three types of text factors that affect comprehension. They are the genre of the book, the text structure, and the text features. Shown here are the roles in comprehension for these three factors. Pause the mini lecture to read the roles in comprehension. Now let's talk about the specifics of each of the three text factors. The three types will differ depending on if the text is fiction or nonfiction. We will start with fiction. Fiction books are narrative in nature. Their format can be either picture books or chapter books. Picture books have brief text, usually spread over 32 pages, in which text and illustrations combine to tell a story. Novels are longer stories written in chapter format. Most are written for older students, but some are for students reading at the second and third grade levels. Chapter books have few illustrations, if any, because they don't usually play an integral role in the story. There are several narrative genres. There are fables, folk tales, myths, legends, fantasy, science fiction, historical fiction, and contemporary fiction. Fables are brief stories meant to teach a lesson, and they usually conclude with a moral. Folk tales are stories of the people. There are seven types of folk tales. Myths grew out of an early people's need to understand and explain the world around them and their own existence. Legends are rooted a bit more firmly in history. Fables, folk tales, myths, and legends are many times listed as subcategories of fantasy. Traditional fantasy is literature that originated orally and has no known author. The stories we now associate with the Brothers Grimm are traditional fantasy since the Brothers Grimm only collected the oral stories and are not the original author. Modern fantasy is distinguished from other genres by story elements that violate the natural physical laws of our known world, events akin to magic. Science fiction differs from fantasy not in subject matter but in aim, and its unique aim is to suggest real hypotheses about mankind's future or about the nature of the universe. Contemporary realistic fiction tells a story that never happened but could have happened. Historical fiction can breathe life into what students may have considered irrelevant and dull, thus allowing them to see their present as part of a living past, that people as real as themselves struggled with problems similar to their own, and that today's way of life is a result of what these people did in finding solutions. Stories have unique structural elements that distinguish them from other genres. The most important story elements are plot, characters, setting, point of view, and theme. They work together to structure the story and authors manipulate them to develop their stories. Plot is a sequence of events involving characters in conflict situations. Conflict is the tension or opposition between forces in the plot and it's what interests readers enough to continue reading the story. Conflict occurs in four ways, between a character and nature, between a character and society, between characters, and within a character. Pictured are some books that are good at illustrating plot. Characters are the people or personified animals in a story. They are the most important structural element when stories are centered on a character or group of characters. Characters are developed in four ways. Appearance, action, dialogue, and monologue. In appearance, readers learn about the character through descriptions of the facial features, body shapes, habits of dress, mannerisms, and gestures. The best way to learn about a character is through their actions. Authors use dialogue to breathe life into their characters, develop a plot, provide information, move the story forward, and spark reader interests. Authors provide insight into characters by revealing their thoughts using monologue. Some authors use all four ways to develop characters but in many stories, one or two ways are more important than the others. Pictured are three chapter books who have good character development. The next element of story structure is the setting. 
The setting is generally thought of as the location where the story takes place, but that's only one aspect. There are four dimensions of setting, location, weather, time period, and time. Many stories take place in predictable settings that don't contribute to a story's effectiveness, but sometimes the location is integral. Severe weather, such as a blizzard, rainstorm, or a tornado, is crucial in some stories. For a story set in the past or in the future, the time period is important. If Number of the Stars, pictured here, was set in a different era, it would lose much of its impact. Time is the last dimension of setting. This dimension involves both the time of day and the passage of time. In some stories, the setting is barely sketched. These are called backdrop settings. The settings in many folk tales is relatively unimportant, and the convention, once upon a time, is enough to set the stage. Stories are written from a particular point of view, and this perspective determines to a great extent the reader's understanding of the characters and events of a story. There are four points of view, first person, omnipotent, limited omnipotent, and objective. The first person point of view is used to tell a story through the eyes of one character using the first person pronoun I. A good picture book illustrating first person is The True Story of the Three Little Pigs. In omnipotent viewpoint, the author is godlike, seeing and knowing all, telling readers all the thought processes of each character without worrying about how the information is obtained. The limited omnipotent viewpoint is used so that readers know the thoughts of one character. It's told in third person, and the author concentrates on the thoughts, feelings, and experiences of the main character or another important character. The book Hatchet is a good example of limited omnipotent viewpoint. Most fairy tales are told from the objective viewpoint. The focus is on recounting events, not on developing the personalities of the characters. Theme is the underlining meaning of a story. It embodies general truths about human nature. Themes usually deal with the characters' emotions and values, and can be either explicit or implicit. Explicit themes are stated clearly in the story, but implicit themes must be inferred. Stories usually have more than one theme, and their themes usually can't be articulated with one word. Charlotte's Web, for example, has several friendship themes, one explicitly stated, and others that must be inferred. Pictured are three more books with excellent theme development. Authors use narrative devices to make their writing more vivid and memorable. The more commonly used literary devices are dialogue, flashback, foreshadowing, imagery, suspense, symbolism, and tone. Dialogue is the written conversation where characters speak to each other. Authors use dialogue to move the story forward while bringing the characters to life. Flashbacks are an interruption, often taking readers back to the beginning of the story. Authors use flashbacks in time warp stories where characters travel back in time to a particular historical period. Foreshadowing is hinting at events to come later in the story to build readers' expectations. Authors often use foreshadowing in the beginning of the story. Imagery are descriptive words and phrases used to create a picture in the reader's mind. Authors also use metaphors and similes as they craft images. Suspense is an exciting uncertainty about the outcome of conflict in a story. Authors use suspense in the middle of the story as characters attempt to thwart one roadblock after another. Symbolism is a person, place, or thing used to represent something else. For example, a lion symbolizes courage and a dove symbolizes peace. Authors use symbols to enhance the theme of a story. The Chronicles of Narnia by C.S. Lewis have a multitude of symbolism in each book throughout the series. Tone is the overall feeling or mood in a story, ranging from humorous to serious and sad. Authors create the tone through their choice of words and use of other narrative devices. Many times, undergraduate college students ask me where they should start in collecting books for their classroom library. Unfortunately, there is no one list of every book every teacher should have. I usually tell those who ask to start with the Newbery Caldecott Award winners and go from there. Since we have been briefly discussing narrative genres, I will give some examples of the different genres. These books are good places to start. Someone else to ask for good examples of the various genres are the Children's Reference Librarian at your local public library. 
This slide shows suggestions for fables, folk tales, myths, and legends. The books pictured on earlier slides are also good books to have in your classroom library. Here are samples of books that fall in the fantasy genre. Some of these authors have other excellent books in this and other genres. Here are examples of books in the realistic fiction category, including contemporary fiction and historical fiction. Up until now, we have been discussing fiction. Let's turn our focus to nonfiction. Nonfiction is also called informational text or expository text. The shift to nonfiction traditionally happens in fourth grade, but it can happen earlier. Their format can be either picture book or chapter book. Nonfiction books provide facts on just about any topic you can think of. Of all the nonfiction books out there, some of them can be classified in two subcategories of nonfiction alphabet books and biographies, autobiographies. Many alphabet books are designed for young children who are learning to identify the letters of the alphabet. Other alphabets are intended for older students and have words representing each letter with an explanation of the concept in paragraph long entries. The book, H is for Hoosier, pictured on the previous slide, covers Indiana A to Z. There are actually two versions of this book by two different authors with similar and different A to Z words on Indiana. I used both books in fourth grade when I taught Indiana history. Pictured on this slide are alphabet books for younger children. Students read biographies to learn about a person's life. A wide range of biographies are available for kids today. Only a few autobiographies are available at the elementary reading level, but there are some. Ask your librarian for help in finding these titles. Pictured are a few biographies. Nonfiction books are organized in particular ways called expository text structures. When readers are aware of these patterns, it's easier to understand what they're reading. The most common expository text structures are description, sequence, comparison, cause and effect, and problem and solution. In description, the author describes a topic by listing characteristics, features, and examples. Phrases such as, for example, and characteristics are, cue this structure. When students delineate any topic, they use description. Pictured is a graphic organizer that is best used in this text structure. In sequencing, the author lists or explains items or events in numerical, chronological, or alphabetical order. Key words for sequence include first, second, third, next, then, and finally. The events in a biography are often written in the sequence pattern. Pictured is a graphic organizer that is best used in this text structure. Comparison is when the author compares two or more things, different, in contrast, alike, and, on the other hand, are cue words and phrases that signal this text structure. There are many comparison graphic organizers. Pictured is one graphic organizer. The Venn diagram is another popular choice. In cause and effect, the author explains one or more causes and the resulting effect or effects. Reasons why, if then, as a result, therefore, and because are words and phrases that cue this structure. Pictured is a graphic organizer that is best used in this text structure. In problem and solution text structures, the author states a problem and offers one or more solutions. A variation is the question and answer format in which the writer poses a question and then answers it. Keywords and phrases include the problem is, the puzzle is, solve, and question answer. Pictured is a graphic organizer that is best used with this text structure. Nonfiction books have unique text features that stories and books of poetry normally do not have, such as margin notes and glossaries. The purpose of these features is to make text easier to read and to facilitate students' comprehension. Nonfiction texts often include these features, headings and subheadings to direct readers' attention to the main idea, photos and drawings to illustrate the big ideas, figures, maps, and tables to provide diagrams and detailed information visually, margin notes that provide supplemental information or direct readers to additional facts about a topic, highlighted vocabulary words to identify key terms, a glossary to assist readers in pronouncing and defining key terms, review sections or charts at the end of the chapters or the entire book, 
an index to assist readers in locating specific information. It is important that students understand these non-fiction text features so that they can use them to make their reading more effective and improve the comprehension. Students may find complicated sentences hard to understand, so they need to know ways to derive sentence meanings. We will discuss two items that affect sentence comprehension. First is sentence difficulty factors. These include sentences with relative clauses. A relative clause is a clause that refers to an antecedent which may or may not be restrictive. Sentences with missing words can also be hard for students to comprehend. Sentences in the passive voice and those that express negation are also sometimes hard for students to understand. Second is punctuation. Punctuation can greatly affect the meaning that a sentence conveys. Do you remember from the fluency mini lecture about the panda who eats a sandwich in a restaurant and when finished takes out his gun and fires two shots in the air before leaving? That one comma, a punctuation mark, made all the difference.